Welcome, everybody. This is Craig Fryer with Fundify in Austin, Texas. Thanks for joining us. We're going to give folks a couple of minutes to make their way to the webinar and appreciate uh, Clint. Thanks for joining us. I see you there. And we have Salona and Amy and myself here today, and we should be joined by a few more folks here in a moment. So thanks again for being a part of today's live stream. We're going to talk about the Fundify Startup Marketplace today. And in specific, we're going to uh, uh, talk about a number of the things, but specifically, we're going to feature one of the companies uh, as an example of what's happening on the marketplace, and that is uh, the, the company Cluster. And so we're honored to have CR Salona uh, joining us today. He's the CEO. We'll, we'll talk with him in just a few minutes here. One thing is an important disclaimer uh, to begin with is that nothing in this live stream is uh, shall be considered an offer to sell or a solicitation of any offer to buy any security to any person in the jurisdiction to which this offer solicitation or sale is unlawful. So this is a basic SEC guideline. And uh, so this is an informational session today that we're basically talking about the nature of Fundify. And in particular, we're going to feature one example in our startup marketplace of Cluster. So in a moment, I'm going to turn it over to Salona, and he's going to talk a bit about Cluster and what's happening with the company, what they do, what they represent, what they stand for, and to give you a sample of kind of a feel for what startups are about in terms of uh, the kinds of companies that are doing regulation equity crowdfunding today on funding portals like Fundify. And then I'm going to ask him a few questions about the company and the presentation that he makes, again, just to provide an example of what uh, companies think about and how they structure uh, their company offering, it's called. It's basically a, uh, a, an offering for a regulation crowdfunding. And then um, if you have specific questions that you would like to ask, please uh, do those. We have a Q&A section of Zoom, and you can click on that button across the, the bar, the Zoom bar, type it in, and Amy Thompson, our director of Marcom, will be monitoring that, <clears throat> that Q&A, and then she can ask those questions uh, to, to Solona. And then we'll ask any final closing comments. And by the way, this is meant to be interactive. So uh, feel free if you want to chime in with a question, not only to Q&A, but you can also open your mic and talk to us that way as well. And we'll wrap up with a few closing comments about the nature of Fundify and our startup marketplace. So to, to proceed, um, I'm going to, to show you a bit here, just a quick sample of uh, what the cluster product looks like and, and a general sense of it. You can go to Cluster for Change to look at their website and see more about their company. Also, here's a QR code that you can scan to go and see uh, their site in particular. So uh, uh, CR, if you would uh, go ahead and get ready to share, I'm going to stop sharing on my side and you can sure. share your deck and then we'll go from there. And oh, by the way, folks, this is being recorded and we'll make this available on demand in our events page at fundify.com shortly after today's event. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us, Salona. Really appreciate Hi. it. If you could introduce yourself to of uh, the, the live stream, and then we'll uh, proceed to hear more about this company. Yeah, no, thank you. Well, Craig, first of all, thank you for giving us the chance to just talk about kind of what Cluster does. I think it's important to understand kind of what potential is out there to create change in your communities. And, and for us, it's been something we've been on about for a long time. And I've been very lucky in my career over the last like 21 years of building different technologies now I'm at this point where we built this tool that is really starting to just accelerate in how Generation Z, millennials, and really all of the above can create and affect positive change. Uh, we're really lucky. Uh, we're a finalist for a Silicon Beach Startup of the Year. And it's kind of a different validations of kind of what we've been talking about. But at the end of the day, I think we are all live in a very unique world now where there's all these different digital channels. Each person, each one of you on this line is a publisher, right? And for a lot of the generations who are under the age of 40, which is about 50% of our population, they've grown up as digital natives, right? Really being part of the digital renaissance of every social network under the sun. But within that, that cohort, that group of people, there is a true group that cares deeply about affecting change. And our mission is about helping those individuals find purpose, right? Cluster is an app which you can download, um, but it's all about helping people to say, look, you've got the ability to move your audience to likes and comments. And now we complete that journey and allow it to become action. And what's really fun about us is you think about the successful startups that have happened in the past, right? Peloton, socialized working out, Instagram, socialized pictures. 
what we're really trying to do here is just socialize and simplify purpose, right? Think of it in terms of, you know, volunteering for the masses. There's an opportunity here as you think through your, again, these 13 to 30 year olds, really that sweet spot of 17 to 30, where, you know, you want to go out and do something that makes you feel more powerful, right? We're living through a pandemic. Hopefully this is the last one for a hundred years again. Um, but we've all gone through this, this process of feeling kind of disenfranchised and disconnected and social channels in general don't necessarily create that meaningful connection anymore. They strip the human, right? The socials out of social. What we do at Cluster is we look at not just this generation, but we look at how do we allow you to feel powerful? How do we allow you to use your digital network to create your own ice bucket challenge? Remember that? In essence, we realize that there's no better person to activate your community than you. And as you start to think about kind of who this generation is and, and where they're going, right? Gen Z and millennials are very, they're very different just because they're born, as I said before, digital natives, right? You think about 50% of our country, really for the first time, I think in our history is under the age of 40, myself being 41, I'm just kind of on the cusp, but it's okay because I grew up like before the internet, with the internet, through the internet, and now my daughters will probably be digital natives as well. But what's so interesting about the worldliness and interconnectivity of, of this generation is that not only is there 70 million young people that want to get out there and activate change, but each and every one of you on this line can also affect change in a very true and fundamental way. But change is not just about you going out into your community. It's about you holding brands and people who want your money and want your time accountable. If I ask you for something, I should provide value for that something. And what you find is Gen Z and millennials really care about brands standing for something. I'm talking disproportionately so. But what's cool about that is as brands start to stand up and really push through and, and play an active role in the consumer's journey, i.e. creating hosting clusters, the fans and the, the users come back in spades and they, they shower them not just with positive feedback, but with true intention, intention to purchase, intention to use your product. And in a nutshell, you know, if I was to quickly summarize cluster, I've kind of hit you guys with a lot. You know, it's, it's, we're a platform that just allows you to take control of your digital presence and use it not just for better engagement. And I'll show you what that means in a second, but use it to affect change, to like tell the story of your community, bring that back to all of us, right? Tell, celebrate those stories of diversity. Like we're the first true generation of Americans where we pretty much represent every single you know, culture in the world. Imagine the storytelling potential you have there, right? Learn something new every day, really positive, good news, right? Sources of truth. But what's really cool about Cluster as you guys start to use our platform and understand more about what it is to be part of this kind of purpose-based economy is that Cluster, the way we're looking at engagement is it's not just about change by engagement, but it's about using brands to help you become more powerful. And so what we've also developed is this whole idea of a true second gig economy by giving back. So it's not just about you saying, I'm going to go and do uh, walk rescues, right? totally counts and you should absolutely do that or whatever it is you care about. As you start to do more and more of those, what happens is we start to understand how much better you are at loving pets or helping people in need. As that starts to happen more and more, you basically become part of the cluster network, which then allows you to start to pick up brand sponsorship as a normal person. And that'll be happening in 22 because at the end of the day, brands, big brands, right? Fortune 500, 1000 brands, even, even mom and pops, they're all fighting for mindshare. And when you think about this, like we as a country are, are more in need now of humanity and the interconnectivity of community than ever. Like we need each other. And the best part about philanthropy and more importantly, purpose, equally importantly purpose, is that you suddenly start to care about your neighbor who maybe you don't agree with, right? And from a brand's perspective, if a brand can be at the center of that, we're no longer talking about a branded item where you're stalking like an ad where it's like a piece of creative forced upon you, or it's a piece of product put into your piece of content, right? Your favorite you know, YouTube video or Hulu or et cetera. We're now saying a brand can provide you with purpose, right? We talked about this in the beginning about providing value to you, the consumer, or to us, uh, the, the aggregate con you know, consumer. We now allow brands to not only give back, but start to do good 
and allow you to become the change agent. And the brand is the enabler of that. And some of the learnings we've had around this as we're really starting to fundamentally develop our product are, have been astounding, right? We launched uh, in, goodness me, beginning of this year. We've been having some amazing pickup, as you can see. <laughs> we've a uh, very light lift for us. We've had a lot of really positive press about it because I think, you know, just ask yourself, if you wanted to give back today, where would you even start, right? And what we think about is, think about it this way in terms of a pyramid, right? At the top of your pyramid, about one sixth of it, let's just say, are the nonprofits, which need our help, right? But then there's five sixths of us. We just flipped that pyramid. We said, well, wait, what if everyone can go out and start to affect change? What if everyone could go out and say, wait a minute, I have causes that matter to me and I have things that matter to my community, right? While I live in Los Angeles now, I grew up in a small town in New England. And if you know small towns, you understand the kind of need you have as a, as a true little community, right? Where you know your neighbors and you know your neighbors' strifes and struggles. But what Cluster does is we allow you to, and this is a real example we just did, uh, with the Elephant Project, right, which is a wonderful program where not only do you, can you donate money, get a cute little plush toy, and save these majestic animals, but we raised awareness about what happens to an elephant as it comes into captivity, right? It's a very challenging and very traumatic thing for these majestic beasts. But Cluster, in a nutshell, it just allows you to create an event or attend an event, right? And it does it all on your phone. For the Elephant Project, what was really cool, last Thursday, we were able to get a couple celebrities together, a whole lot of people, and it all happened in real time on one day where we actually get people using their digital networks to promote what they care about, check in, have a lot of time. The cluster platform is actually gamified, so you get rewarded as you go through it. So it's kind of like instead of just playing a game and getting nothing out of it, you get a gamified leveling up, and you're also becoming a better, more well-rounded person. As you start to share out your content, what happens is you'll see that the algorithms within the traditional social networks, right, your TikTok, your Instas, Facebook, et cetera, they perform at a K factor better to human content. Why is that? When you think about, you know, if you've got kids, a dog, you travel, uh, when you share a very human piece of content, not a I'm better than you piece of content, but a, hey, this is our journey. Look at me. I'm with my daughters or my dog. I've got a 13-year-old rescue now, right? When you share that content, what happens is the algorithm sees it. Your, your fans from across the country, your followers, your family, they engage with it, right? And they're not necessarily all connected. And that takes on a life of its own. And the algorithms say, oh my God, this person's killing it. This is a good piece of content. Open up their followerships. And so what Cluster in essence does is it takes that traditional user behavior, which we all do, we post, we like, we comment. It then allows it to get better engagement. It, it gamifies to share more throughout your journey. And it makes you feel good about yourself again, because at the end of the day, we're not just saying you should go out and be selfless about giving back. We're saying you can be selfish about giving back. That's a good, positive selfish. The country itself, if we all cared more about helping each other, we would be in a much better place. And when you think holistically about each of you, you all are, have the ability to truly push content. But now we're at a point where it's time to pull people in, whether virtually or in real life, to celebrate kind of the causes that matter and make an impact, right? And so our outcome from the Elephant Project, right? We had uh, over 80 simultaneous clusters happening across the country, all on your phone, which is so cool. And you were able to walk virtually in solidarity. You were able to post and use your digital network for something more than just a vanity metric, right? What was really interesting was we also raised quite a bit of money uh, on the platform. But most importantly was the, from at least from an engagement perspective, was the creators who participated in this, you know, creator, influencers, celebrities, et cetera, some of them saw 40% increases on their engagement. And, and why? I just made mention of before. Human content performs better in social, but the, the juxtaposition, the really unique piece of that is when you tell a follower, a user, your friends, hey, I'm going to be here at this time, it legitimizes both who you are, the cause you care about, and the fact that like I can connect with you. Like I can see a person again. It's, it's a pandemic, but I'll wear a mask and I'll, you know, use. I use sanitizer. But what some of these creators saw was their audience completely flipping, saying, oh my God, we're so excited for you. This is amazing. We just want to be part of your journey. The same is true for you. Like the cluster mission is not just about working with big names. It's about bringing us all together for a better tomorrow. It's about finding sources of truth. It's about quantifying and qualifying what it is to give back. I'll, I'll make it the simplest future for you now. In 2022, 
right? You'll hear high school kids who are going to university talking about what their cluster was, not their volunteer activity. They'll say, my cluster this year, as I go to university was myself and a thousand other students got together and cleaned up the entire West coast of California. And a cluster can actually not just track that, which is a marketplace opportunity, which is awesome, but we're going to make it fun, like make it fun to meet your neighbors, to celebrate our differences, because we're in this unique time in our country, as I said before, where there's so many different people all together. We are a Rubik's Cube, right? And our generation, our opportunity is to mix it up as much as you can imagine for the best potential outcome. Because the more mixed up we get, the better the understanding of global problems at a local level we'll have. And all that's missing is the ability to respect each other enough to talk. And what Cluster does, and, and, and I'll give you my last two case studies, Craig, I promise then I'll stop. If you guys can't tell, I'm quite passionate about this and I'm really throttled down to not go over the top here. But you know, there's an opportunity for, for us to really become, and we're seeing this now, the country that like, you know, the, the founding fathers and mothers dreamed of, right? This great experiment that becomes a better place of, of collaboration and volunteerism in a vacuum is great. Volunteerism as a true second gig economy is even better because now instead of you dropping off that pizza or doing a Postmate or doing a task rabbit, you're gonna go out and be able to affect change in your community. And the more of it you do, right, the better off you go. And, and just so we're clear, purpose is not a new thing for us, okay? Marcus Aurelius, who's one of the, the last great emperors of Rome, believed that the goal of life is to find your purpose. But the best way to find your purpose, which we have now in these digital networks, is to do something anything that makes you feel better, right? And the proof, as they say, is in the pudding, which is funny. And that's my dad's old metaphor that I can't believe I just used because he's been gone for a while. But, you know, for us, uh, we had this opportunity and we've worked with quite a few brands now. I'll just show you two. We're, we worked with a car insurance company, okay? Car insurance. They're an awesome client. We're floored about how great they performed. And their goal was to reach different, smaller communities across the country. What we were able to do for them was like, host clusters, right? Which they can do on their own, but we're holding hands right now. And really show the fact that for this particular insurance company, we have we held two clusters, one on financial independence, which Gen Z needs help with as they need to be taught, not from a teacher's perspective, but from a player coach. Like, hey, we're all here. We've all been here. Let's learn together. So financial security and tech inclusion, female tech inclusion, right? In, in the Bay Area. Not only did this program perform like 37% higher than their benchmarks. But we saw feedback from users saying, wow, I can't believe this brand actually cares. Like there's a disconnect in a lot of what people talk about of, hey, there's these great stats and then there's practice. We have great stats. We've tapped into this amazing opportunity that every single person here should want to go out and affect change if you want to affect change. But most importantly, people are feeling a sense of validation as we did with this particular partner as we hosted these clusters, users were like, wow, I can't believe this car insurance company cares about me, or I can't believe they don't do X, Y, and Z. And they were pulling in brand tenants, like brand key you know, marketplace positioning. They were bringing in these aspects into conversation that never happens, right? And I think what's really kind of fun here, and, and I can kind of wrap up at this point, is there's an opportunity to not just become part of a better tomorrow, right? And I'll actually leave you guys with this piece here. But we've been very lucky that a lot of very smart Hollywood people um, who care, Hollywood folks, have kind of not just played an active role in helping us, but they want to create a better tomorrow. And they realize that at the top layer of content creation, of music production, of you know, making a feature film, there's a, there's a disconnect of action. And what Cluster does, very simply, is we allow you to affect change, celebrate your story, cluster makes it fun to do, it's all in the palm of your hand, and you can scale as big as you can possibly imagine because you are powerful. Every single one of us is powerful, but it's about starting somewhere, doing something and doing one thing. We ask everyone to just take one step to start for a better tomorrow. And what you'll see is in a few weeks, in a few months, in a few years, it's a different tomorrow for you. It's a better tomorrow. And that's, uh, that's Cluster in a nutshell. <laughs> hey, super compelling. Thanks so much. And I, I, love your, I love your passion and I love what you bring to the table in this discussion here as well today. So thank you so much for, for sharing about this. And Liz, as you were talking, it brought up a few questions. So 
Um, let's let's shift over into uh, a brief series of, of questions that <clears throat> some of them came from what you've shared, some of them uh, that I had thought about in advance. Amy's going to possibly ask some. And then uh, for folks on the live stream, if you've got a question for Salona, please use the Q&A function of Zoom. Yeah. And we'll look at those, we'll look for those, and then we'll tee those up. So uh, fascinating idea. Talk, talk again, just reiterate for me uh, the idea and understanding of how Cluster makes money. What's the business model and the essence of how revenue is generated with Cluster? Yes, yeah, so we talked briefly about this idea of kind of the second gig economy. I have to walk a tight rope of, I don't want to lose you guys in the fact that we're trying to help you earn money for helping people without setting the baselines of everyone's a publisher. And just like, if you think about engagement, right? Influencers get paid, you know, and I should disclose, I was a very early hire at Vimeo. I got to ride that wave, which was awesome because we theorized the future of content was user generated. Here we are, that was 07. My last company was one of the pioneers of the influencer space, right? Where we owned at one point, like 40% of the marketplace. And engagement is the kind of critical differentiator of having a big following versus an engaged following, right? So Craig, let's talk through your point. How do we make money? It's, it's in essence, right now it's, it's an advertising model, but what we're doing is we're building our first layer of our, of our programmatic approach. Our goal is to allow brands to say, look, there are, let's talk through an example, a beach cleanup, right? Or let's use an idea. There are people who drive around called overlanders, right? There's probably some overlanders on this line. And they care very deeply about both driving a vehicle that they can not crush the environment on and they want to explore this beautiful country. But they also do things like they may clean up their trail. They may do X, Y, and Z. Brands want to engage with that person. So what we do is we bundle all of those people, big celebrities, you and I, like, and we put them all together based on engagement and your interest and your social. And we allow brands to pay us a large fee. And then we, in essence, create that secondary gig economy where we're paying you guys to start going out and affecting change. So brands can say, wait a minute, I can talk to real voices, like, yep, engage with real people, mm -hmm. use my ad dollars to engage that person to use my product and tell their friends about it. And we're like, yeah. And more importantly, and most importantly, you're actually affecting change. You're not just talking about it. You're not greenwashing. You're doing the work, right? And that's the cool thing. And the other piece is data, right? We look at data as in there's a lot of privacy concerns and people are all about to you know, protect my data. And I'm like, what would you do with your data in real life? Like apart from getting all the spam we get and the amazing robocalls, which I think everybody hates, like they're awful. We look at it like, wait a minute, all your social channels fit together, right? A bit like Tetris, but they can tell a beautiful mosaic, a story about you if you know how to use it. So the other part of that is Cluster wants to help you use your data to be better at it so we can help you affect more change so then we can also help you get paid. And all of this is being formulated and formatted right now in real time, both while we grow, while we work with amazing partners. We've got some really cool publishers coming down the pipe too, which I don't want to get into because there's a press coming. Um, but we also have amazing celebrities who just really want to affect change. And they help teach us, right, the, the users, how to do uh, the work, how to actually use our socials to affect change. Mm -hmm. And so in essence, it's just, it's programmatic, it's advertising, right? Programmatic is buying inventory in real time. Uh, advertising is media. So you're doing really cool, big executions. Uh, and then data is just really, it's, it's akin to Facebook and you know, Google, but we're not heartless. We're an app and a, eventually a platform that wants to affect positive change. And we're not, you know, we're not proud. We don't, we don't need to dictate. We want to listen. We want to learn, right? Our, our whole thing is to be the home of kindness and, and a proponent of good. And, and those things both take work and accountability. And those are things that we're ready to both work with. And we've been very lucky that the audiences really like it. Yeah, that's a powerful concept, this force for good and the kindness factor that you talk about. So thanks for that. And I'm curious, uh, to help me understand more about the nature of cause marketing. Yeah. And is that a, a good way to kind of consider what you're doing? And in the, in the context of answering that also, how big is this global sponsorship market, this cause marketing and global and related global sponsorship market in, in your research and estimate? Yeah. So I think, so there's really two sides to any marketplace, right? There's the, how, how large are the people who will buy your product and how large is the pool of money that wants to access that group, right? And there's a bit of a chicken and the egg, but we're lucky here that there's not that problem. So I think when you think about the marketplace size, 
just here in the States, it's 70 million people are actively volunteering. I think they volunteered like 7 billion hours or something like that. It's an absurd number. And that, that those things, the volunteer work, the efforts you're putting forth are happening, but they're sometimes happening behind closed doors. They're happening in a vacuum. And we look at social media, both as a kind of way to not just promote what you're doing for better engagement, but for us to truly understand like how big and how accountable and more importantly, how scalable that marketplace is. And what we're finding out is it's quite scalable. And now from a marketplace size, um, the best way I could summarize it for you uh, is Unilever. Uh, Unilever just came out in one of their recent studies uh, talking about a $1.2 trillion economy for brands talking about their sustainability credentials. That's just one partner, right? Think about this way. Brands spend billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars, trying to get you to buy a chocolate bar. Well, what if instead of buying a chocolate bar, we were able to say, okay, well, you know what? Uh, my mom, my mother has type one diabetes and it's always affected her. And then we say, okay, well, instead of that, we're now going to pivot that business into a healthy, delicious, sugar-free, not going to kill you sugar bar or a uh, protein bar that helps diabe diabetics kind of mellow out their day so They don't need as much insulin. That's a product that you could start to bring out to market from a traditional big CPG, consumer packaged good company. We then can help them both bring it to market through our network of creators and ambassadors. We've got quite a few people involved that have spectacular reach. But more importantly, we can actually help a product help its customer, help a product really become accountable. Guys, the days of people just making plastic bottles and putting a fluid inside are not only behind us, but there's true systems change happening. And for a lot of the big brands, they're kind of scared. And they think we as a, as a group have to be a little slower to rush to judgment. We need to hold them accountable, right? But we can't just cancel everything. We have to give people the chance to come back and really talk through the problem so that the 90% of us who are kind of in the middle, which is all of us pretty much, can talk again. And more importantly, brands, most importantly from our business model, brands can start to funnel their dollars, right? Peeling money from Google, from your Facebooks, et cetera, because we use all of it, right? Your entire digital footprint. You basically can start to talk to your neighbor, get to know your community, right? A lot of us have moved recently and brands are dying to have you as their ambassador, to have you as a person. And so you're talking about a true paradigm shift in the ad model. And we're very lucky that a lot of the people who actually were supposed to be here today and who can continue to be available as we need them have been talking about their system change at the building your product, but there's actual paradigm shifting at the agencies, right? At the brands themselves, and more importantly, at our level, right? We've seen a lot in our country. And, you know, we believe that there is a better tomorrow because there's a more connected, but a more compassionate today that we're building. That's good. And, and the, the brand ambassador it is an evolving area, and I think that's an incredible opportunity to uh, to explore that marketplace um, for clusters. So it's all about execution. You and I have both been in, in startups. You're at Vimeo. I've also been in a number of startups. And for me, it comes down to building a great team, and I'll talk about that in a second, but then executing the plan. So think about this for a moment. What what are the primary challenges to your success in terms of executing your plan and, and seeing the vision that you have uh, Come, come to come to fruition. I mean, I can I can tell you, uh, launching a business and fundraising in a pandemic was a lot. <laughs> uh, I also had my daughter, which was spectacular. But you know, I think there's a. I'll give you a slight meta moment. If you guys can't tell, I'm a little abstract sometimes about theses. Uh, you know, life puts in front of you the challenges you can overcome. The the scary part is about being consistent enough, being consistent enough to overcome it. Right. That's how you truly define self discipline. Um, and I'm not the best at that, but I tried really hard. So you talked about like, you know, what were some of the milestones, some of the things we had accomplished? The first was we had a, I'd stealth this business. I'd been building it quietly for about five years. And when we launched it right towards the end of last year, raised our money, brought the product to market. What was interesting was we learned so much that not only were people open for this, but we were like, there's a lot of UI, UX, right? The way you engage with something, the way you play with something on the back end that needed to be changed. We then took focus groups. We worked with partners. We're very lucky to have some amazing nonprofits, very large ones, who want to start rolling us out. And as they start to kind of get onboarded and start to roll through this, they're now starting to see those benefits. And so the problems were really like, what's the marketplace fit? 
do we fit it? And the answer was yes. Like, right. So we built our platform. We piped in a whole bunch of amazing API partners. We're really able to start hitting some, um, some cool event scale. We said, okay, great. Next thing is do brands care. And we said, okay, great. Went out, met with a lot of cool partners. We're now closing deals and we're working with these brands. As a matter of fact, we're working with Hawaiian Springs. Uh, we, this just happened. And Hawaiian Springs is a really cool, sustainable water company. And we're working with an awesome creator who's going to go out there and make this amazing, beautiful mosaic, right? And they're going to ask their followers to start putting in ideas and together create an aluminum can, right? Systems change, audience journey, beautification of your environment, celebration of Hawaiian culture, local culture for them. And that's kind of everything we've been talking about. So now we've got, we built the product, it works, right? It's always getting better. We are, uh, every two weeks, we're a lean organization. So we're always developing new products. We've showed there's marketplace fit as brands are now excited as are publishers. And now we're starting to go to market, right? And what we're doing is we did our, our elephant project last week. We've got a couple of really cool clusters set up this month. And that's only going to start really speeding up because look, no one has all the answers, right? Every startup like even Twitter, it was one company until they slightly pivoted, then they became Twitter as we know it today, right? We know that there's this amazing blue ocean in front of us. The, the volunteer space is a space that is primed and ready for technological advancement, but most importantly, it is a, it's ready for mobile native, right? It's on your phone, basically. And we built this company in a way where it is agile enough to not just evolve and build product very rapidly for the needs, but we're listening in real time. And guys, we're, we're not trying to sell you a widget. We're trying to save the world. And we are going to do that with your help. But most importantly, we're gonna have a more accountable, more compassionate world. So we're listening to our consumers, Craig. We don't have to have all the answers because we're agile enough to be building when we start to realize that there is consensus around an opportunity. We can spin up a project and two weeks later, it's live. And that kind of agility makes a company like ours very dangerous in an excellent way because you need to tackle some of the big problems we have. You need to be agile, okay? You need to be willing to have uncomfortable conversations. And we will in the months to come because guys, we're worth fighting for a hundred percent. Yeah, it's great. And and I would just think the pent up sense of agency that a lot of people have just to get out and do anything, yep. especially something that has meaning and purpose to them personally. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this, uh, there, There's a lot of that pent up agency uh, ready to be released, I think. Let's shift for a moment. I'm actually going to go to a question that we received on the live stream from sure. Clint. Clint says, love the heart and the product. I understand the importance and power of in-person meetups, but what are you doing uh, to address digital meetups as well? Oh, that's awesome. So oh, is, there, is, is there more? Nope, that's it. Thank you, Clint. Okay, yeah. Uh, great question. And so check this out, ready? So when we launched the company, right? So we launched in a pandemic, which by the way, was awful for everyone, especially us, right? And we said, okay, wait a minute. There is an opportunity here to, to blend virtual and digital, right? In a mobile first way, right? Cluster, the app, which you can just type in cluster social and app stores or play. It'll, it'll pop right up. We're like the first or second. You'll see it's like a very cool, vivacious, like lifestyle brand looking one. That's us. So what we've actually done is the, the Elephant Project, when we had those, those 80 clusters happening, in essence, they were virtual. People were logging in virtually. They were across the country, across the globe, right? And while we're only here in North America at the moment, we do have very large uh, aspirations as we are backed by an international family office to get global very quickly, but you've got to get it right first here in the States. You've got to get it right in a couple of our territories that we're targeting. What you will find is virtual and IRL kind of happening as one, that's kind of what we've done here. So you can create a virtual event and if you want to, and you can, you can use any platform you want. Cluster is a distribution and discovery mechanism. Like we make giving back fun, but we also, you can drive people to Zoom, you can drive them to Hangouts, whatever you want, or you can bring them out to a moment in time that matters to you, right? Making sandwiches for the elderly couple in your street who don't wanna leave because of the Delta variant. That counts as volunteers. Right. Like I made mention of before, we have a lot of animal lovers walking a rescue who's who's in, a, you know, currently in a pen or in wherever that counts. And you can use your digital to tell a good story of inclusion. Simply put, guys, there's if you think of things in terms of a scale of one to ten. OK, right now to volunteer, it's a bit laborious. It's kind of hard to get out there and do things. So the, the scale of one to ten is like a two or a three cluster moves the needle potentially all the way to the ten. But we don't need to get to that 10. What we've done is we said, look, we can get to a three and a four, provide you with extreme value in a way to do virtual events, to do IRL events, 
either or or together in a way that's fun and no one else can really do it by using everything that's out there, not changing your behavior, but incentivizing your behavior, right? From in a fun way. And you'll be happy. If we gave you guys a 10 to a 12, over 10, uh, you know, you'd find yourself being, wow, there's so much potential here. Where do you go from there? And so what we're really ready to do is we're building in, we're future-proofing our product so that we can provide value today and really start to accelerate as, as consumers and users get more excited about it. We're going to be listening to you guys and just providing more and more and more value so you can be more and more and more impactful in the communities that need help. That's great. And so follow-up question from Clint, by the way. And let me also say, others who have joined, if you have a question, there's a Q&A button in Zoom. Please click on that and type your questions in, and then we'll uh, queue those up for Solana to, to respond to. So the follow-up from Clint, and thanks again, was, is there a development plan for groups to actually meet on the cluster app? So, yes. If you need to ask for any refining question, just let me know, and, and you can ask that of, of Clint as well. I think, look, everyone, uh, and if you guys can't hear, my little 12-month-old uh, is currently in the other room. Mom and I are doing like baby football as we go through Zooms. Um, look, there's there's a lot of growth that Cluster wants to become, right? Our goal in 22 is to truly become not just a media hub, but a plan, but a home of activation, right? A home of change and a home of content. That's why you've got so many of these big producers attached and, and creators. I think to your point, we want you to be able to do what you really want to be able to do all through cluster eventually, right? Your Insta, your TikTok, and all these other platforms are exceedingly insular. They want you to like and comment, and here's another picture, here's another video, and here's another tweet. We think that there's, and we're actually seeing this, not only do you not want, not only do you want more, but like there is an ability to use that insular behavior to your benefit right? Where you can create your cluster and it could be about the subject matter you care about, right? Food security, the environment, et cetera. Uh, you know, or like example, one of the influencers who was at our, our elephant project, he has a skate park. He's like, can I just have my skate park where I teach young kids how to skateboard? And we're like, yeah, of course that counts. Like giving back and, and moving your community forward is, is the most important piece. And our goal is to truly become that platform, but you have to be aware, guys, of the stages of life. Craig touched on it before, like building a company is about accepting the reality of your moment and maximizing that upside while road mapping the future, right? But knocking down those barriers to accelerate growth, accelerate learnings, and ensure that the business can make it to the goal, right? But a lot of it in that process, you know, right now we're a tool. We want you to have more fun volunteering and user social. Phase two is we become a true platform. We are publishing content. We are helping you to organize your people and you're creating your cluster profiles, right? We provide you with the ability to create a true cluster profile. You're going to see more and more of these kind of celebrity and event pages kicking on our platform, but you have a right to talk about the things you care about and not a single platform out there gives you the ability to highlight your social cause. Well, cluster becomes the stamp for that, right? And then phase three, as I talked about in the beginning, we want you to be able to have a second, we want to create a second gig economy about kindness through giving back. And that, that needs these couple steps before, right? We need to work with brands to establish these benchmarks. And this is proprietary data. Like this is information we have that no one else has, nor can they get, nor can they even start to think through because we've done all the years of work before that to get to this particular point. So we're going to be here for you in the short term to help you meet more people. As you said, get out there and have fun, wear a mask, be safe, but help your community. We're going to be there as you start to grow as a creator, as you start to grow in your own community, right? No matter how big or small, it matters your engagement. And then we're going to be here to celebrate those stories, those people who are being, you know, who are telling and doing the work and, and being just celebrated. We're going to be able to find people in small towns across America and put them front and center on cluster as we start to grow and become the home of good in 22. That's and great. that's what, yep. Well, we, and we need a place to celebrate. We need reasons to celebrate. And so that's, uh, there's some, there's some real greatness there. Let, let's shift gears for just a second. A couple yeah. more questions uh, as we're uh, closing in today. <clears throat> One is, as you and I know, executing is so key. Uh, it, it, you know, almost nothing else matters, but the execution of the idea and that is all predicated upon your team. So talk, talk for just a minute about how your team's uniquely qualified to execute on this vision and succeed. Yeah, so I think the hardest thing you can do in life is admit you don't have all the answers. Uh, I do it all the time. 
currently getting rage text on my phone about the kids screaming in the other room. So that's a, that's a marriage joke for anyone who's married. I'm full of dad humor and it's not funny. But um, I think it's important for you to be willing to, one, as a founder, it's hard to give the reins over to people. Um, I'm no different, but I've gotten so comfortable with my team and more importantly, the excellence they bring to the table. Our head of community spent time abroad working in NGOs, literally doing the work. She's now, then she went to CSR, realized they weren't moving fast enough. Now she's here. Our head of marketing was the former head, uh, the digital lead over at Fox, part of Beats by Dre. Our BD team has been from the ground up publisher side. You know, our finance was not only at AIG, but he understands kind of how the different models have to come together. Our engineering team is just spectacular. They're some of the top students. Uh, they're currently at Apple University in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, they're just awesome young people that want to get to work and start changing the world. It allows us to give them a high level of pay, relatively speaking, and it allows us to still grow as a business as we're starting to ramp up. We've done the work to get the right pieces together to truly be successful here. That's great. And, and so you're doing an equity crowdfunding raise. What, what is it that you're hoping to, planning to accomplish through the funding that you're doing, that you're seeking through crowdfunding? Well, I think it's two things. Like, look, companies like ours and, and a lot of these VCs, like or a lot of these startups get opportunities. The opportunity to be part of something awesome is held up for these elite, right? And that's not always fair for, for your average consumer, right? Like, I'm no different. Like I want to invest in cool things. I want to be part of a journey. Like I want to put some money and then become part of something. And I think what's so cool about crowdfunding if you can't tell as I'm kind of excited about it, is that like, it puts the power in the hands of all of us. Like, it's such an interesting time as a, as a investor, as just a normal person to say, wait a minute, instead of a latte, I can do something meaningful and I can be part of that. And then I can be a fan of that. That's interesting, right? I become an advocate. I become an army of people who have put a little bit of money in, but I can scream from the top of the mountain about how great this is and how awesome my passion is for what I'm doing. And let me put, put it this way. Success is about finding in-stream opportunities so your life doesn't change that much to be successful, right? I like going out and walking my rescue and talking to other dog owners, right? For me to do that and document it, I'm not changing my behavior. Each and every one of you out there is doing something like that. You may not even realize holding the door for a person counts, right? And, and just by doing that kind of behavior and documenting it, you're not changing your behavior. You're creating opportunity for yourself. You're potentially creating wealth for yourself. And you're talking about a product you're passionate about. And it's your journey too, right? That's what's so exciting for me about it. Very cool. And so last question, I like to time travel. So sure. let's look at 12 months in the future. Everything went great. According to plan, you executed, the team came together, the, 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 the users base came together and people of interest, the, the people that wanted to advertise the brands. What happened? in 12 months that you're elated and you say that was a, a, a raging success? It's simple. Uh, in 12 months, we're going to affect a million lives positively. In 24 months, it'll be 10 million. After that, it'll be a hundred and then a billion lives before four years, period. The rest of it is fiat. Honestly, we're gonna make a lot of money. It's gonna be great. We're going to change lives, but guys, you have to have big, strong coals, right? And there, are, there is a country in need, but just us, the world is in need but the world needs America to talk again. It needs our country to be like what it was always supposed to be, which is this great experiment. And giving back philanthropy is everything for us. So we will, we will be a whole new economy starting next year, right? We will be a true second gig economy. We will help people help their communities. We'll celebrate it and that's the future. Very cool, very, very cool. So thank you, thank you for that. Let's, let's take a moment now to basically shift gears and talk about how Fundify helps to simplify startup funding and make companies like Cluster, opportunities like Cluster, uh, connect with uh, the ability to fund their dreams, fund their vision, and empower their execution. So I'm going to shift over to our site for just a second and just show you a little bit about the nature of our marketplace. This is our homepage. And if you go to Explore Startups, this is our marketplace of investment opportunities. And sure enough, here's Cluster. Here's some others that we have currently active as well as something that are called fast pitch preview campaigns. These are companies that are getting ready to go live with their campaigns and are taking indications of interest. Uh, and so if we want to go and look at any of these companies, you can go to the Explore Startups, click on a page and see information about the company here. And so each of these companies have information about them. 
you can find out more uh, from them in terms of information that they've included. Uh, this, this includes pitch deck, their financials, their historicals. And then on the SEC is something called a Form C. This is part of the regulation crowdfunding process. And you can go and take a look at that and see a lot of deep diligence uh, questions that the SEC requires of everyone that's doing a, an equity crowdfunding raise. And then more information about the companies you scroll down. And these are consistent across all of the funding campaigns. These are called offerings uh, or pitch pages. And so and there's your sweet family. And so you can see all this information there and that helps you to decide, hey, is this something I'd like to help empower uh, uh, myself with, with investments? So, mm -hmm. uh, or if you're a startup and you would like to raise funds, this is a way that you can go and take a look and, uh, and sign in. It costs zero to sign up, it costs zero to invest. And we have a team of experts can help you navigate this regulation crowdfunding process. And so as we wrap up today, again, you can see their opportunity card, their page. Also here on the screen, I've got a QR code that'll take you right to this screen. So feel free to take a look at that. Otherwise, if you wanna contact us and uh, ask more about crowdfunding, about being a part of startups community uh, on Fundify or the investor community, please do so. You can also uh, scan here to go to the site or here's all of our contact information that's available. So I'd like to thank you, Solana, for joining us today. And for the others who have joined us on the live stream, thank you for your questions. Once again, yep. as a reminder, nothing in this live stream webinar is an offer to sell or a solicitation of an offer to buy any security to any person in a jurisdiction to which, to whom uh, or in which such as an offer or solicitation or sell is unlawful. So that's a required uh, disclaimer that we wanna make sure we provide there. And again, we invite you to come to fundify.com forward slash events for future live stream events, not only with startup companies talking about the startup marketplace, but also uh, various vendors that can help um, to make the uh, execution of plans even more efficient and capital efficient, that is, as we go forward. So uh, last word to you, Salona. Thank you for your time today. Appreciate you being there. Yeah, if you, uh, if you guys can't tell, I've changed backgrounds because, again, the hot potato of baby life has, has kind of made us move. But, but I'd love to leave with one point, which is like, while pandemic has been terrible for all of us, it's reminded us just how human we all are, right? And while you've seen me as a, as a very real dad, and actually I love both of my daughters, uh, and I've gone full girl dad in that way, I think there's an opportunity to even become more human as we kind of move out of this pandemic into the next iteration of what we're supposed to become. And, you know, thank you, Fundify. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And any questions about a better tomorrow, we would be happy to talk through. Sounds good. And you can ask those questions on the discussion section of his page on Fundify. So, Salona, thank you very much. Folks from Austin, Texas, thanks for joining us. I'm Craig with Fundify. Look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thanks again.